If you need some extra strength and room for your oversized spare tire on your 2018 or newer JL Wrangler, this TerraFlex Alpha HD hinged spare tire carrier and the adjustable spare tire mount will be a mod that you want to check out. Now this will be for the JL owners looking for a high quality carrier with the ability to mount up a 40 inch tire without questioning it while also being incredibly easy to use and operate on a daily basis. Now the mount will also be fully adjustable if you need a system that you can fine tune for custom fitment while also having the ability to mount accessories if you need that additional function for off-roading, overlanding, or just your day-to-day -day adventures. Now again, this will fit up to a 40 inch tire on the back with adjustability. So this will work with your OE or aftermarket rear bumper, allowing you to choose and upgrade in time. Now speaking of upgrading, this will also have multiple mounting points that I mentioned for different locations on the hinged carrier for TerraFlex accessories, including a recovery jack mount, fluid containers, CB mount, and more. Now the third brake light will also be relocated with this kit to the center of the tire for easy viewing um, to keep you more noticeable and it will have a quick release lever so you won't have to fight with it when it comes to taking off your spare in those just in case moments. Now what's really great about this carrier is that it's very very easy to use, allowing you to have the strength, but also the ability to open your tailgate like you regularly do. Now, it's also pretty neat about this compared to the JK predecessor is that this will span most of the length of the tailgate, which will offer better weight distribution to keep some peace of mind that your tailgate's not going to sag over time and that this is going to function well for years to come. Now this is a two-piece puzzle here. So starting off with the carrier itself, this is gonna be strong yet lightweight. Uh, to keep weight savings in mind, not weighing your JL down, made of a 6061 T6 extruded aluminum, and it's gonna have an OE quality UV resistant powder coat finish on top. Now the end brackets there are gonna be a one-piece heavy duty forged steel material, and this will also have mid-carbon hardened steel 5 8 inch hinge pins for optimal strength. Now the tire mount will also be heavy duty with a heavy duty gusseted design that's going to be formed and welded from CNC laser cut steel for strength. Now the adjuster here will be able to uh, move inwards, outwards, and vertically so you can really fine tune for that diameter tire and the back spacing of your wheel. Now best of all is that there is no drilling or modification required and this is going to come with absolutely everything that you need right out of the box for a straightforward install. Stop. Now this will come in at about $1,400, which is a premium price point, but for good reason considering the detail and thought put into this carrier. Now for example, this has a quick release third brake light, which may not seem huge, but is going to offer a premium appearance with the relocation and is going to save you a ton of hassle if you ever need to use the spare. Now also the dedicated accessory holes for a multi-functioning system and overall just a well thought out design, even with the weight distribution and the weight savings in mind, while getting one of the strongest setups possible. Not to mention the fact that you can safely and securely pop 40 inch tire on here without having to worry makes it well worth that $1,400 in my book. Install is going to be surprisingly straightforward at a one out of three wrenches on the difficulty meter, taking you about an hour to get the job done with the right tools and setup. Um, now at this point, we can head over to the shop and check out how to get this onto your JL at home, step by step uh, in all the details of that process. So that's gonna wrap it up for me. Let's go ahead and get into it. For this install, you will need an impact, a ratchet, four and five millimeter Allen sockets, T8, T25, T40, and T55 torque sockets, a swivel adapter, an extension, 3 8 a quarter inch adapter if needed, a 12.10 millimeter socket, 13 and 16 millimeter sockets, 1.5 and 3 millimeter Allen wrenches, supplied thread locker, alcohol wipes, and a soft load mallet. What's up guys, today we're gonna to be installing a new spare tire carrier on our Jeep, so let's get started. So to start things off, we're gonna to have to open our hatch and go inside and disassemble a few things to get our electronic com connections out of the way and take care of all that. Then we can move back out here and continue our disassembly. So we're gonna go ahead and remove our inner hatch panel here. And then we're gonna come in and remove another panel through here. So we're gonna grab our panel removal tool and go ahead and work our way in, find a spot that it can go in. Might be tough at first, these panels are pretty tight. But once you get it, you can just start popping it out from all your clips. 
We'll go ahead and set this panel aside. Then we can come in to our seat belt cover here and we'll just kind of reach into this open spot, pop it out of the way. You want to get it as far off as you can here so then we can access our hinges and everything else that we need to access in here. So next we're going to go ahead and remove our hinge detent here and we're going to grab our T40 Torx bit on our impact. Go ahead and pop this out. And now that we have our bolt out, we can go ahead and just wiggle our detent out. So the next step you would take would be to remove the painted tape covers for your hinge brackets here. Ours have already been removed due to previous installs, but all you'd have to do is take a razor blade or something like that and go ahead and just pop in behind the cover seals and just tear those off. Um, and your kit does come with new covers, so you will be able to replace them after install. So now we've come back out to the rear of our vehicle and we've got our door closed, but we've got our window still open so we can access our inner hinge panels here. And we're gonna go ahead and grab ourselves some painter's tape. And we're gonna lay out a couple spots here in between our rear hatch and our body lines. And because we are removing our hinges, we're gonna need to realign our hatch with the factory body lines once we're done. So this is gonna help maintain alignment as well as reference points if we need to adjust it after we've installed our new hinges. So we've got two on this side. We'll stick one over here on this side. Go ahead and stick one here. Now, before we do anything modifying these, you wanna grab yourself a pen or a Sharpie and make a couple straight lines across from your body to your hatch. And remember, two lines is better than one and three is better than two. So you wanna do three lines on each piece of tape. This just ensures your best alignment. Go ahead and mark our bottom one as well. So now we can go ahead and remove our four T55 Torx head bolts holding our hinges on to our hatch. We've got our T55 Torx bit on our impact. Now from the factory, these are painted, so they might be a little bit of a pain to get the bit actually into the head of the bolt. So you may have to just work it in a little bit. And we'll go ahead and pop these out. Then we'll set these aside. So now we're gonna remove our three 13 millimeter bolts from each of our inner hinge brackets here using our 13 mil socket on our impact. And you wanna make sure you don't drop these. They will be reused. our top hinge and we'll go ahead and do the same thing for our bottom hinge We'll 
remove our bottom hinge. So now we'll go ahead and remove our factory carrier itself, again using our 13 mil socket and extension on our ratchet. Move our bottom bolts here. want to hold on to your carrier as it will fall. So now we'll want to go ahead and disconnect our camera and brake light connectors, which would be that white one and then this black one. So you pull back on your red safety tab, push down, go ahead and pop your connectors out. And then we'll pull those through our grommet here. And then we'll be able to fully remove our carrier. So now that we have our connectors unplugged, we can go ahead and pull this grommet out here and fish our camera and brake light wires out through this hole. And then we'll go ahead and remove our carrier. All right, so now that we have our tire carrier off the vehicle, we're gonna need to go ahead and disassemble it a little bit so we can get a few things out of here and swap them over to our new assembly. The first of which is gonna be our backup camera. So it has these two T25 Torx head bolts holding the retainer in place. So we'll grab our T25 Torx bit on our impact and go ahead and remove these real quick. Set these aside. And you want to reach under and support your camera once you remove the second bolt. And we can go ahead and flip this over. And there is a retainer in here. We're going to go ahead and pull out. And this is also the same bracket that has your three lug studs to actually mount your spare tire. So we're going to pull all this out. You may need to work with your studs a little bit to get them to come out. So sometimes these studs can be pretty stubborn coming out of their homes here. So we're going to grab a soft blow mallet just give them a few taps to help them work themselves out of place. And now comes our camera and stud bracket. Now we're going to have to disassemble the front fascia to get our brake light dismounted from our factory bracket. So now we're going to go ahead and remove this front fascia here for our factory brake light bracket so we can remove that and swap it over to our new assembly. So again we'll grab our T25 Torx bit on our impact and remove our hardware. So once we have all of our fascia hardware removed, we also have to remove the two mounting bolts on each side so it'll come out. So the bottom part of our fascia will also come out. And 
And again, these are all T25 Torx head bolt. So now that we have this out, we can go ahead and pop the front fascia off. And now we'll have access to our mounting hardware for our third brake light. And again, these are T25 Torx bolts for everything. We'll remove our two screws holding our third brake light in place. We'll go ahead and separate that from the bracket. And then we'll be ready to move on to mounting all this onto our new assembly. So now we can begin the process of swapping our camera and stud mount over to our new bracketry here. And what we're going to have to do is grab a T8 Torx bit and remove the three T8 Torx screws holding our camera onto our factory mount. So we have our T8 Torx bit on our ratchet. We're going to run these out. Now these are small screws, so you want to be careful you don't lose them in case you want to keep them. Also, you don't want to apply too much pressure for them to strip. And once we have that out, we can go ahead and get our camera out, we'll just pop this bracket, little push pin out. And once we have our camera unscrewed, we'll go ahead and pull this little push tab out of the bracket here. And we'll go ahead and give ourselves some slack in the wiring. And we can go ahead and push down on our pink tab here and disconnect our camera from the harness so we can fish our wire back out. Now you wanna be very careful with your camera. You don't wanna damage it, they are expensive. We'll feed our wire back through so our harness is free, camera is free, and then we can go ahead and separate this outer bracket from our main one. So now that we can have our camera fully removed from the bracket, we can go ahead and grab our new one and begin swapping everything over. So the first thing we're going to do is grab our factory harness and run it through our new camera bracket so we can access it. Get it fed all the way through here. It's a little bit tricky. Once we have that fed through, we'll go ahead and plug our camera back in. And then we'll get it set in place for its new mounting spot. So now that we have our camera plugged in, we'll go ahead and get it down into its mounting location. And then we'll grab three of our provided 1.5 millimeter Allen head screws. Go ahead and get those into position. Now these are tricky, tiny bits of hardware. So you will, I know it's hard to see, but it's gonna be kind of a pain to get these in. Get at least one of yours in the slot here. Once we have all three in, we'll run them down until they're snug. Sometimes if you're using these ball-ended Allen wrenches like we have here, especially on the smaller ones, the ball end can tend to get worn out. Your bolts aren't actually stripped. Sometimes the ball is just rounded. So we'll go ahead and use our flat-ended part here. Get these all snug down. So now we'll go ahead and put our camera cover on. Get that into position. Followed by two more of our provided 1.5 millimeter Allen head screws. 
get those run in. Snug them down again with our flat end just for a better grip. All right. So now we'll go ahead and grab our third brake light here and we'll grab our new bracket. Go ahead and set it in place. It has two locators, so you make sure you have it in the right spot. And then we can just reuse our factory hardware. Mount it in position. Get our T two T25 Torx head screws back into place, and we'll run those down with our T25 Torx bit on our impact. Remember, you're going into plastic here, so you don't have to go crazy with your tightening. Just make sure it's nice and snug. And we can come back over to our bracket here. First, we are going to grab our brake light plug, and we're going to fish that up through our bracket here, and then behind the clamp portion of our brake light bracket, we're going to get our brake light plugged back in. Okay. Now that we have that plugged in, we'll have our brake light facing outward. We'll loosen our clamp up just a little bit here so we can slide it into position. So now that we have our clamp on, we'll get it into position and to tighten it down, we're going to use our three millimeter Allen wrench. And you want it snug enough to hold, but not too snug to where you can't release it if you need to. Okay, so that's nice and snug, but we still have access to it if we need to pop it off. And all our wires are going out of the back of our bracket. All right, so now that we have our tension set for our brake light clamp and everything's good there, we're actually gonna take it back off because it will need to be off so we can mount our spare tire to our holder. So we'll go ahead and unclamp that. And we're gonna slide it off. And we're actually gonna unplug our brake light again. Just get that unplugged. Just make sure our connector is going to be out of harm's way and we'll set this aside for now. So now we can come over and prep our adjustable portion of our spare tire carrier. And we're going to install our provided studs here. Now this does come with thread locker that you do want to put into your threads when you mount your studs. For demonstration purposes we're not going to be doing that, but you should definitely do it at home. And if you want to just have your factory set up, now you can't really go wrong with how they have it set up here, but you just make sure you line your studs up with your factory studs. Go ahead and get those threaded in. Remember the smaller portion goes into the mount part and these will actually, will obviously be your tire mount for your lug nuts. And we're going for right in the middle setting to where our tire is going to sit on this carrier. If you have different size tires or oversized tires, you may want to adjust up or down for visibility out of the rear or where your tire is actually going to sit and make sure it clears your bumper. But for ours, it's going to be fine right in the middle.
Now as far as tightening these down really into the carrier goes, once you send your lug nuts on for the first time and really torque them down, they will be pretty much as tight as you want. Or the other option could be you could double nut the top portion of the stud and go ahead and tighten that down just to make sure if that's what your preference is or actually you could even use a lug nut to tighten it down. It might get stuck on there, it might not, but the double nut method or just torquing them down when you put your wheel on is the simplest way to do it. So now we've got our camera mount and brake light mount over our studs here. Now you'll notice that this does have six holes. These are meant for if you are to adjust up and down, you have three mounting points on either adjustment side. So don't be alarmed that you see all six here and you don't have six provided bolts to mount it down. So we'll go ahead and take our provided four millimeter Allen head bolts. Go ahead and get those into place. So we're gonna use the outermost mounting points get our third one in down here. Then we're gonna go ahead and tighten these down using our four millimeter Allen socket on our ratchet. Once all those are tight, we can move on to the next step. So now that we've got all our preparations done off the vehicle, we can come back to our rear hatch here, and we're gonna prep our surfaces for our provided gaskets around our hatch. So we'll grab an alcohol prep pad, just wipe this stuff down, get any like excess gunk off, like over here. Now obviously you're gonna want yours to be in as perfect as condition as you can get it. So if you need something a little more beefy than an alcohol prep pad, you can go ahead and use like non-solvent cleaners to get everything off. So we've got those two prepped pretty good and the four around where our carrier itself is gonna go as well. Wipe all this off really good. Then we can get ready to go ahead and install our new gaskets. So we're gonna grab our provided gaskets and we're gonna remove the adhesive backing cover. And then we'll go ahead and get these lined up over our mounting holes. Give them all a good stick. We'll do the same thing for this lower one, then we'll move over to our carrier position. So now we're going to do the same thing for our four mounting locations here on our carrier area. Then we'll remove our backing and our smaller of our gaskets are going to go up on these top two parts and the larger ones will go down bottom. We'll get this lined up. Our top two squared away first. And we'll get our bottom two lined up next. And notice your bottom gaskets have a more of a pointed end here. That's gonna go up out towards your vent area so it tapers off so you don't stick it to your vents. So now we're ready to go ahead and get our hinge and hatch panel installed. So we're gonna need an extra set of hands for this just to make it easier. So I'm gonna hand this off to my buddy here and he's gonna send the hinges through these access ports and we're gonna reuse our factory hardware to go ahead and mount this back in place. So now we've got our hinges in place, we're gonna grab our factory 13 millimeter bolts. And we'll get a couple of these in place just to give some relief to our buddy that's holding it. We'll get two started up top. Started down bottom. Get our 
last one's in place. Then we can go ahead and tighten these down using our 13 mil socket on our impact. So now we'll grab our impact and our 13 mil socket and we're just gonna snug these bolts down for now because we still have to check our alignment on our hatch. So we won't fully tighten them yet. Get this snug. Then we can come back out to our outside of our hatch so we can get everything lined up and mounted. Okay, so now we can remove our two tire bumpers here. Those simply just kind of pop out on their stock locations. And we'll set those aside. And then we're gonna swing our carrier over and begin to get it lined up. You notice it looks a little bit off here. This is low and a little bit out, but that's okay. So we're gonna work this into position. What we're gonna do is kind of push in and then pull our hatch up and we're gonna grab our factory T50, T55 Torx bolts, a T55 Torx bit and our impact. We're just gonna lightly run two of these in just to help us with our alignment getting started. just lightly in there then we'll grab the rest and then we'll just check our body lines and our alignment from our tape lines as we go and we'll get a lower one in Let's see how our alignment looks here now we can get our next two in and our lines are looking pretty good the doors looking pretty flush checking everything out. Now before we tighten all this down, we're gonna install our other mounting hardware here, get everything tight in, and then we'll tighten everything down and make sure our adjustments are right. So before we get this all the way tightened down and while we still have room here, we went ahead and grabbed our camera and brake light mounting point, and we're gonna go ahead and run our wiring behind this little recess here on our main bracket, so it can go back through into the hatch. All right, we'll get all our wiring through here. We're gonna send our connectors back through factory grommet hole here. Get our factory grommet back into place. Then we can move forward with mounting the rest of our main bracket. Now we can go ahead and get our carrier bracket in place. And we're gonna reuse our factory hardware, which is our 13 millimeter bolts. And we'll get this installed. Now you may need to push on your main bracket just a little bit to get it to go in far enough to start your hardware, and that's okay. Our top one started, we'll get our lower four in place. All right. Now that we have that loosely installed, I'm just gonna set our tire bracket up on top here and we can go ahead and begin tightening everything down and adjusting everything. 
So now we'll go ahead and begin tightening down all of our mounting hardware, working our way back to our hinge to make sure our alignment and everything is situated. So we'll grab our 13 mil socket on our impact and begin tightening our bolts down here. Now we want to kind of get even pressure on this so we'll work crisscross around. I want to make sure things start seating. Now that we have our outer ones on, I'm going to check our body lines here. Everything seems to look pretty good. So we'll continue on. Now that all these are tight, we'll come back over to our hinges. We'll grab our T55 Torx bit. Then any final adjustments we need to make, we'll come back into our hinges and work our hatch out that way. So judging from our alignment here, we're gonna need to bring our hinges out just a hair. So we'll just loosen them up ever so slightly. And we'll work our hatch out. So it becomes flush. We'll snug these back down. Check our bottom alignment here. That looks pretty good. So we'll go ahead and snug these down. Now that we have all these snug, we're gonna go ahead and open our hatch, double check how everything works. No creaks, nothing pinches, nothing hits. Now you notice the door doesn't quite latch all the way, so we'll need to adjust that a little bit farther. So now that we've done all our alignments with our door, we can go ahead and install our new detent. So just like with removing the old one, we're gonna go ahead and just push the new one into place. There we go. And we'll get it lined up with our mounting point of our door. And we're gonna reuse our factory Torx head bolt to mount it. We'll grab our T40 Torx bit and our impact. We'll tighten this back down. Once you have that tight, you want to give your door a swing, make sure the detent catches in all the positions it's supposed to. We got there, you got fully open, then you have your wide. So now we're ready to go ahead and get our actual stud portion of our carrier in place. Now we're grabbing our provided 12.10 millimeter bolts, two per side, along with this double washer here. We'll go ahead and get these in. So we'll get these started. And they're two per side. And we'll go ahead and do the other side here. So 
So now that we have our top two mounting points in place, we're gonna go ahead and grab our provided flange bolt and captive nut and go through the bottom portion of our mount here. Now that we have the threads of our bolt sticking through, we'll get our captive nut in place. You know, notice it has a dowel on it that's gonna ride along your adjustment track here. We'll set that in and we'll start to snug our bolt down. Okay. Now where you have this position is all gonna depend on what size tire you're running and what your applications are for that. So before you tighten this down, where you set this as far as out or in is go all gonna depend on what size tire you're running and et cetera. So you're gonna wanna measure from your hub of your wheel to about the end of the side of your tire and see if that distance here where your wheel's gonna sit is gonna be enough to clear the back of your hatch mounting point here. So now we're ready to go ahead and tighten down our upper mounting bolts here. So we've got our 12.10 mil socket and a swivel adapter on our impact. We're gonna go ahead and tighten these down. Right, we'll go ahead and do the same thing for the other side. Now we can go ahead and tighten down our bottom bolt using our 16 mil socket on our impact. Make sure it's nice and secure. All right, so next we can come to the back side of our hatch and start putting everything back together on our interior side. So we'll go ahead and plug our camera connector back in here. That's this white one. And then our brake light up here. Push our red safety tab back into place. Make sure they're good and connected. Then we can reinstall our cover panel. So we've got our panel cover here and we're gonna line up all of our push pins, connectors. Make sure our door doesn't run away. Now that we've got that done, we can go ahead back into our back seat portion and get that back into place. So now we're gonna install our new hinge bracket covers provided with our kit. We'll just remove the adhesive backing. These will go directly where our factory ones came off. We'll do that for the top and the bottom. All right, so now that we've got our stickers on, we can come here with our seat belt and beauty panel here. Make sure our detent here goes back into position. Get our seat belt portion lined back up. And we'll start getting everything back into place. Panel goes underneath. And you should be good inside the vehicle. So now we can go ahead and get our spare tire installed. Get it up into position here. And you want to get your brake light wire through the hub. Just slide it into place. And get your tire mounted to reuse your lug nuts, whichever ones you have holding your wheel on. And once you have your wheel on, you're gonna use whatever specific lug key or lug nut socket you use for your specific set of wheels to go ahead and snug these down. And lastly, you're gonna grab your brake light and new bracket, and just like we showed you before, go ahead and plug your third brake light in. And we'll tuck our wires back. Go ahead and slide our light on. And clamp it down. 
Alrighty guys, that about wraps up our review and install of our TerraFlex Alpha HD hinge spare tire mount kit for the 5x5 wheels for the 2018 newer Jeep Wrangler JL. Thanks for watching, and as always, for everything Wrangler, keep it right here at ExtremeTerrain.com.